is a familiar face. She's been in studio in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center, but we're catching Representative Patricia Serpa. It's nice to see you again, Kate. You Thank as you. well. There's a lot going on yes. up here today, and there's an oversight hearing, chair of the oversight committee. Yes. Talking about the training school today, let's start with that. We're talking about the training school. Um, we expect to get some updates, as you know, and as your listeners, I hope, know, the child advocate made some very specific recommendations, as well as the state police. I believe the director of the um, ACI was in. They had some very specific recommendations. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, Kate, unfortunately, not many, if any, are in place. The JPWs, the juvenile program workers, who are like the guards for the young people, they were supposed to be outfitted with some special uniforms, some radio, some equipment. They don't have that yet. Some technology that wasn't working isn't working yet. So I don't think that we're going to hear everything I was hoping to hear. Well, that's the point of the Oversight Committee is to keep tabs Correct. on what's going on. Correct. Do we have a sense? Are we going to hear this afternoon? Is it budgetary? Is it you know, structural why these changes haven't been put in place yet? I, can't, I honestly don't know the answer to that problem. Um, and if we had a superintendent, that would be helpful. And we've been without a superintendent now for, I've kind of lost track. Uh, they had interviews. They had one viable candidate. I've done a little bit of research on my own, to be perfectly honest with you. Yep. And they were offering the job to a police officer in one of the cities. And when he learned about the environment there, he chose to stay in his current employment. So this is that, a, is that a big hurdle? I mean, the difficulties facing the training school, the folks who work there every Correct. day to find a person who wants to take that home. They need leadership. I mean, you know that all of the people under you are willing to follow an enigmatic, enthusiastic, enthusiastic leader. And I'm, I hear from the JPWs on the inside who contact me via social media that the changes haven't been enacted, they still don't know whom to answer to for whom, that there's little administrative support for them. So uh, what are we going to do? Wait for another riot? I hope not. How much do you get this sort of inside intel by folks who work there but are scared to say anything publicly but just say, Chair, you need to know what's going on? Kate, it happens all the time. Whether it's DHS workers, whether it's the JPWs, whether it's DCYF workers, they're always afraid for their jobs. They're afraid for retribution. And I understand that. And I have never, ever, ever, since I've been chair of this committee, violated confidentiality. No, I've never used anyone's name. So we're keeping tabs in the training school today, House Oversight at the Rise here at the State House. But keeping tabs on other things you have as well, let's start with where things are at with DCYF. Uh, well, with DCYF, we're hearing from the child advocate today. She's going to re be reporting on a group home, Blackstone Valley, I forget the whole mm. name. Um, and frankly, it sounds like it was run like a criminal enterprise. Drugs being sold out of there, uh, young people being transported in and out of the home for sexual purposes. The workers sleeping on the job. No documentation, no record keeping, using the banned sexual aversion therapy. In other words, if you come in with some transgender issues, trying to convert you into your physical gender. So everything they were doing wrong, I believe we have since closed it. I hope that's what we hear from the advocate today. And we've seen continued issues that you keep tabs on with DCYF. And one of the things that was addressed last year was understaffing just folks who are able to go out and keep tabs on a myriad of issues of the DCYF. Are they doing a better job? And are you seeing in this proposed budget the ability to increase staffing? Well, I don't think in this budget there's an, an ability to increase staffing, but I do want to give Dr. Pacola credit. She walked into a situation where the acting director before her, Jamia McDonald, who was sent into DCYF to save some money, she saved some money by not filling 42 social work positions that were budgeted for, by the way. And those 42 social workers would actually go out to the families, work with the families, work with the parents. So when you're minus 42 social workers, that work falls on the people who are working. So Dr. Picole has done a, a good job of trying to fill those, but we're learning there's a turnover okay. after a few weeks. It's certainly not work cut out for everybody. So there's a turnover there, which is also problematic. Tell viewers what exactly this turnover looks like. Well, I don't have exact numbers what the, what the turnover is. But in any new place of employment, obviously, your new employer has to train you, kind of get you used to the climate, mm -hmm. to, the, to the workspace environment. And you need a few weeks, no matter what new job you True. take on. You need, a new, you need a few weeks, sometimes a few months, to see if you're a good fit with that company. So many of the, the people taking these jobs after a few weeks on the job and shadowing experienced workers okay. and find out just how difficult this work is, they say, it's not for me, and they walk away. And I get it.
So facing the DCYF challenges, you talk about the staffing ability, the understaffing is a difficult one to overcome. What else is needed to really improve the conditions uh, across the board? One thing I, we definitely need to work towards, and Jennifer uh, Griffith, the child advocate, and Dr. Cole are working towards um, getting more foster families in. Okay. Because I just mentioned that group home, not that they're all like that, mm. but you know as well as I do that children do better, do well, do better in a family environment with some other children who maybe can model good behavior with a loving, even a single parent. Yeah. You know, one good single parent is better than being one of many in a group home. So Dr. Pacola and Jennifer are doing some outreach in the various communities. We'll hear hopefully from them today how successful that is so being. So a push for foster homes. A push for foster homes. I think they said, I think Dr. Pacola said that she needed 200 or 250 good foster homes to kind of drill down into the population, into group homes. And, you know, the money we spend on the group home, which is considerable, millions, maybe we can transfer that money and pay the foster families a little bit more to take on, especially the challenging mm. children. They have multiple challenges. I mean, they don't come from the best environments. They don't come from great backgrounds. They haven't been exposed to good parenting for the most part. So um, I have no problem with paying those foster families a little more. Okay, looking for outcomes from DCOIF. Going from the training school to DCOIF, let's talk about UHIP. UHIP is still a problem. I'm most disappointed for all taxpayers in that we bought into this new computer system and into this new project because it was supposed to be a money saver for everybody. Now we have spent a half a billion dollars. We're up to $500 million in spending. Some of it federal, some of it state, but we're, we're all state and federal taxpayers. And we learned at the last meeting that there will be no savings realized this year. And that's a gross disappointment. So finally, no savings realized this year. Are we in a better position right now in March 18 than we were in March 17? Well, in terms of numbers waiting in line and, and applications not processed, instead of 17,000 applica 17, applications not being processed, as opposed to now 4,000 not being processed. Still 4,000. Still, it's still 4,000. Okay. I mean, 10 is way too many. So are we making progress? I guess a little bit, but it's like crawling to home base on your belly. It's an inch at a time, an inch at a time. And you're going to continue to be looking over it as House Oversight Absolutely. Chair. Absolutely. Well, I know you've got the committee hearing shortly, so. We will. Chair Serpa, I appreciate your taking My the time pleasure, to come Kate, over today. My pleasure, Kate. Anytime you okay, want to Okay, thank you. Thank okay, you. I'll let you go around the corner. Thank you. House Oversight Chair Patricia Serpa here okay. to let us know about what's going on with UHIP, DCY.